Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners. Welcome to Manifested e-learning platform, Chemistry Lesson. I'm your teacher, Waniki Nyaga. In our previous lesson, we discussed the enthalpy and the enthalpy changes. Where we seen that enthalpy, this is the heat content of a system. And enthalpy change, we said, is the energy change realized or energy absorbed or gained in a chemical reaction. That is the enthalpy change. Then you say that you cannot be able to determine the enthalpy of a system, but you can be able to determine the enthalpy change of a reaction. And the enthalpy change, we say, is given by Enthalpy change, you see, is given by the enthalpy of enthalpy of products. You subtract enthalpy of reactants. So that's now what gives the enthalpy changes. Then again, we give the examples of the previous substances we had used, that is ammonium nitrate and sodium nitrate. Now, ammonium nitrate and sodium hydroxide, and that, that was the endothermic and exothermic reactions. Therefore, in this lesson, I just want to give you some more examples to show the enthalpy changes and how you are able to write the enthalpy notations. So in this lesson, I want to give you more examples. And our example number one is combustion. So combustion is just heating of a substance using heat or just direct heating. For example, we have ethanol. So when you burn ethanol in, or when you burn ethanol in oxygen, then the products are carbon dioxide and, and water. Again, you say that the equation is supposed to be balanced. So the equation, you balance the equation by, by putting these numbers. So our equation is balanced. So that is the chemical equation to show the combustion of ethanol. Or when ethanol burns in oxygen, you get carbon dioxide and water. In this reaction, that energy is lost to the surrounding. So we expect that the enthalpy change will be negative 1260 kilojoules per mole. Negative 1260 kilojoules per mole, that is our enthalpy change. So this shows that burning ethanol in air, that heat is lost to the surrounding. So this heat which is lost to the surrounding, the amount is 1260 kilojoules per mole. So that is one example of an enthalpy Notation. Remember we have seen that an enthalpy notation should contain a balanced chemical equation and the enthalpy change for that reaction. Our second example is dissolving sodium nitrate 
in water. So the chemical equation is sodium nitrate. I want to make them very clear to you. So this is the sodium nitrate solid. When you dissolve it in water, you get sodium nitrate solution. This is aqueous, meaning it is a solution. So the enthalpy change realized is positive 21 kilojoules per mole. Positive 21 kilojoules per mole. This means if it's a positive, then this is an endothermic reaction. Then it being an endothermic reaction, then it is positive. So it just means that Dissolving one mole of sodium nitrate in water, you require 21 kilojoules of energy so that that sodium nitrate solid to dissolve completely in sufficient amount of water. For example, number three is burning methane. combustion of methane. So this is a chemical equation. You also get the products of carbon dioxide and water. It comes to balancing the equation, then we, we balance it by placing letter 2 just before oxygen gas and 2 just before water. And that way the equation is balanced. Therefore the enthalpy change is positive 728 kilojoules per mole. 28 kilojoules per mole meaning that 728 or 728 kilojoules per mole are lost when you burn methane in oxygen. So negative 728 kilojoules per mole, that is the enthalpy change. And always when you're writing the enthalpy changes, remember to show if it's positive or negative because if you leave it like that, then you will not be able to know whether it's an endothermic reaction or it is an exothermic reaction. So anytime you see a negative sign, so that sign means that is an exothermic reaction. And anytime you see a positive, then it means that that is an endothermic reaction. And again, these, these enthalpy changes, they are molar enthalpy changes, meaning that negative 1260 kilojoules per mole, which is realized when you burn methane, this one will be realized when you burn methane, not methane, but you burn ethanol in oxygen, one mole of ethanol in oxygen. And one mole of ethanol, this is how you are going to get the one mole of ethanol. So this is the formula of ethanol. So it has three elements. So that is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But the mass of carbon is 12. So the mass of one carbon atom is 12. And you have two carbon atoms. So you multiply by two. Then you add the mass of hydrogen is one, then we have six hydrogen atoms, that is three plus two plus one 
making them six. So the mass of hydrogen will be one multiplied by six. Then you add to the mass of oxygen, which is 16, and you have only one atom of oxygen. Therefore, the mass will be, this is 12 times 2 is 24. You add 1 times 6, which is 6. Then you add 16, which is now going to give you 46, 46 grams. Therefore, negative 1,260 kilojoules per mole this one is going to be realized when you burn 46 grams of ethanol in sufficient amount of oxygen or in a large amount of oxygen to ensure that this ethanol burns completely. So one mole of ethanol is equivalent to 46 grams. Forty six grams. That is the mass of ethanol. If it's our second example, dissolving sodium nitrate in water. This is our sodium nitrate. So one mole of sodium nitrate will contain the mass of sodium is twenty three grams. And you have one sodium, uh, one sodium atom only. Then the second element is nitrogen. The mass of nitrogen is 14. And the mass of oxygen is 16. And there are three atoms. So this will give you 23 plus 14 plus 48. It is 85 grams. So 23 plus 14 plus 48 is 85 grams. Therefore, to realize positive 21 kilojoules per mole, you will have to dissolve 85 grams of sodium nitrate in sufficient amount of, amount of water. And in our last example, which is combustion of methane, this is the formula of methane. Methane, carbon has a mass of 12, so 12 grams. You add mass one, and there are four atoms of hydrogen, so one multiplied by by four, then that will give you the mass of methane. So this is 12 plus one times four is four, which is now giving you 16 grams. Therefore, to get negative 728 kilojoules of energy lost means you have to burn 16 grams of methane so that you realize 728 kilojoules of energy. So those are the molar, the molar masses of these substances. So this is the molar, molar amount of energy or the mass, the, the energy change realized when you burn or you dissolve one mole of that substance. Example number four, it is the example of decomposing calcium carbonate. decomposing calcium carbonate. This is calcium carbonate. So when you decompose, 
decomposition just means you are heating. When you heat calcium carbonate at high temperatures, then you get calcium oxide and carbon oxide gas is produced. Therefore, the enthalpy change is positive, 178 kilojoules. It is positive because you require heat, you require heat so that you break down carbon, calcium carbonate to its constituent uh, substances when it is heated. Therefore, again, positive 178, this is the molar, molar enthalpy. Maybe to show you just like the others, calcium carbonate, the mass of carbon is 40, the mass of, the mass of calcium is 40, the mass of carbon is 12, and the mass of oxygen is 16, and there are three atoms, so 16 times 3. This gives you 100 grams. So 40 plus 12, that is 40 plus 12 plus 48, will give you 100, 100 grams. Therefore, positive 178 kilojoules per mole will be realized when you burn 100 grams of calcium carbonate. In, is when you burn calcium carbonate you'll have positive 178 kilojoules per mole. Therefore, you need to understand this, that any time you see a positive, then that means that is an endothermic reaction. Any time you see a negative, the sign negative and enthalpy change, then you should know that that is an exothermic reaction. And these negative and positives, they'll gotten from the enthalpy of products, you subtract the enthalpy of reactants. Remember we saying that in an endothermic reaction, then the enthalpy of products is more than the enthalpy of reactants. Therefore, it is going to give you a positive sign. Then in exothermic reactions, we said that the enthalpy of reactants, the enthalpy of reactants is more than the enthalpy of products, and that's why you are getting the negative sign. So this is a formula you are using so that you are able to get negative and positive. So ensure that you understand those basics. In our next lesson, we are going to discuss board breaking and bond formation. As we give some more examples on this, and how we are coming up with either negative or a positive a sign. But I will leave you with this question. The question is, give two more examples. of enthalpy give two more examples of enthalpy notation so look for two more other examples probably one for endothermic and one for an exothermic reaction as I have shown you how the enthalpy notations are written. So remember, the enthalpy notation should have a balanced chemical equation and the enthalpy change shown. So let's meet in the next lesson, board breaking and bond formation. And thank you for being attending.